Isaiah, as we know, was a prophet. Amen? And a prophet speaks for God. A prophet does not speak his feelings. A prophet should not speak his own thoughts. Amen? But a prophet, a true prophet, speaks for God. Or speak what God wants him or her to say. Not his own message. Not her own message. Not his own thoughts. Not her own thoughts. But the word of God. In the Old Testament, prophets are referred to as man of God or men of God. And so you will often find in the Bible in the Old Testament where Ezekiel or Elisha was referred to as the man of God. Why? Because he's an oracle of God set apart to speak to the people what God wants him to speak. A prophet in the Old Testament is also referred to as a seer. Ones that sees, especially in to the future. And of course, they are also referred to as a prophet. A prophet authority back then in the Old Testament was far superior than the word of a king. The church had more authority back in the Old Testament than the kings who led the nation. If the prophet stood to speak a word, not even the king could veto it. So the prophet being an oracle of God, his word carries more authority than the leaders thereof. Today, we are not finding it to be so. Praise God. We are the church should carry more authority than the government. And when the church stands to speak, the government must obey. Hallelujah. Because we speak as the oracle of God. We speak as the mouthpiece of God. When we speak, our words should not fall to the ground. But men must see the word coming to pass because it's coming from God. And so that's the authority of the prophets had then. But today we have so many people rising up and they are giving themselves titles as prophets. And they are speaking all sorts of things that has nothing to do with God. And so people have lost confidence. Hallelujah. People are skeptical. People are scornful. When somebody says, thus saith the Lord. Because of what is happening. Praise God. Hallelujah. But we are to get back to that place where when we speak, hallelujah, praise God, it is obeyed as the word of God. Isaiah's name means the salvation of Jehovah. And his primary purpose, praise God, as it were the other prophets hallelujah was to seek 
reformation when he speak to the people or transformation it was for them to heed the word of God and to turn to God with their whole hearts and with their own their whole mind Isaiah as we know was the messianic prophet he's referred to as the eagle eye prophet and so even though the Jews at the time in the context of the scripture they were dispersed all around praise God because they were they have experienced exile Isaiah being the eagle eye prophet and the prophet who prophesies the future who prophesies about the Messiah who prophesies about Jesus was able to see that those same people though scattered and dispersed though they were exiled he saw that they had a glorious future ahead of them a future that was wrapped up hallelujah in their coming Messiah though in our present situation we may be encompassed about with all sorts of storms and circumstances hallelujah we have a very glorious future and that future is wrapped up in our Messiah hallelujah that future is wrapped up in Jesus Christ and as long as we stay connected to the vine we will attain to that glorious future and so Isaiah prophesied of the coming of the Messiah not only that he gave detailed description of the atoning work that the Messiah was coming to do an objective to redeem Adam's fallen race my God to make us one with God again and I give God thanks hallelujah that Jesus condescend to a low state so that you and I hallelujah can have relationship with our God again though we were far off and far away from the commonwealth of Israel but Jesus took it upon himself hallelujah to rob himself in flesh and to come down from glory hallelujah not as as they expect as king in splendor but he came as a babe hallelujah with all intention to go through the sufferings that we have gone through there are no areas of life that Jesus has not gone through there are no situation or circumstances that can take him by surprise he knows all about our troubles hallelujah and he cares today hallelujah he's touched by the feelings of our infirmities I don't know what we are going through today but I stop by to tell somebody that Jesus cares oh yes he cares hallelujah he was crushed hallelujah for our iniquities he was bruised for our transgression all oh, the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes by his wound hallelujah we can receive healing his body was broken his body was ripped apart so that we can be put together again put together again our emotion put together again in our minds put together again in our bodies put together again in our spirits come on somebody get up and believe the report of the Lord hey hallelujah for too long we lie down in despondency and despair whose report will you believe hallelujah whose message will you believe whose tidings will you believe I choose to believe the report of 
not the Lord. My circumstances may not give me no evidence that the report, hallelujah, is so, but I still choose to hold on. Paul says, what shall separate me from the love of God? He said, neither death <laughs> nor sword. Hallelujah. Nothing high or low shall separate me from the love of God. Somebody say, oh love of God so rich and pure how measureless and strong I will allow nothing hallelujah to separate me from the love of God an undying love an unfainting love a sure love hallelujah praise God a love that loves beyond condition doesn't matter what the situation is he loves us doesn't matter what the circumstances are he loves us hallelujah Jesus loves us with an everlasting love and I give God thanks for his love this afternoon so Isaiah saw that Israel's future was bright but the problem was Israel couldn't see it. Israel could not see that their future was bright. I wonder how many of us can realize that our future is bright. Come on, somebody tell yourself my future is bright my future is glorious my future is victorious hallelujah come on somebody open your mouth and begin to speak to your present circumstance tell it that your future is bright hallelujah my future is victorious my future is glorious hallelujah praise god because it's wrapped up in jesus so isaiah begin to prophesy he began to tell the people that there is a coming messiah Oh, thank you Jesus and he began to share hallelujah in detailed description the trajectory and the process of the same redemption that they you and I will and have received praise God these were all declared in Isaiah's prophecy but we must realize that within the prophecy though the future was bright it entailed suffering it entailed rejection hallelujah praise God and it takes as it took then an enormous amount of humility to endure Hebrews 5 and verse 8 so that Jesus hallelujah learned obedience through suffering somebody whose report will you believe because there are some reports that are saying that we will not suffer and we are not to suffer but Jesus, the Bible says, learned obedience through what? Through suffering. So though the future is bright as Isaiah prophesied it, and bright it is, and nothing can change that. I don't care how dark it gets. The future is still bright. But a 
it entails suffering. And in order for Jesus to be able to afford us this bright future, he had to suffer. In order for him to afford us this bright future, he was also rejected. I don't know who is facing rejection. Hallelujah, right now. I have had my fair share of rejections. But it still does not negate the fact that I serve the God who came and conquered and the same victory that Jesus hallelujah God he gave to me and he said I'm more than conqueror why because he has already conquered oh glory to God I have within me the conqueror and I rather to believe him oh hallelujah that I am more than a conqueror I can overcome any circumstance I don't care who rejects me I don't care who tried to stand in my way Pontius Pilate tried it hallelujah praise God Aaron tried it hallelujah Israel reject him but it didn't stop him from going to Calvary I want somebody to understand let nothing stop you from marching into the new Jerusalem every opposition that there was Jesus faced it oh let nothing stop you but he pressed because he knew that Calvary must be gained redemption must be given and so he was determined be determined be determined somebody he has heard many reports <laughs> Herod was seeking your life he heard many reports many circumstances many oppositions but he was focused come on somebody the Bible says many voices have gone out into the world not only that the mystery of iniquity is already at work whose report whose report come on somebody whose report will you believe thank you Jesus hallelujah and so Isaiah prophesied he opened this prophecy by asking a question as a matter of fact he asked two questions these two questions that Isaiah asked he wasn't seeking an answer it was what we call a rhetorical question it was an, a question to stir up something within you not not necessarily begging for an answer but it was something to cause one to look within themselves so he asked the question who have believed our report as a matter of fact some theologian says that he was making a declaration praise God as a matter of fact he was speaking facts not only that he was prophesying hallelujah he was speaking what is because the reality is that many did not believe and he was prophesying to the fact that Jesus was going to come and the people would not believe that he is the Messiah hallelujah praise God so he was speaking the facts he was declaring what is 
praise God, wasn't seeking an answer to the question. Thank you, Jesus. And so, as he made a declaration that many did not receive the Messiah, and as a result of them not receiving, because the word believe means also to receive. Hallelujah. If you believe, you will receive. If you believe, you will accept. And so many did not accept. Many did not receive. Many did not believe. And so today, Pastor, we still have Jews going to the wailing wall down there in the middle in the Middle East. And they're still waiting for the Messiah to come still waiting still crying out for the messiah to come when the messiah has already come but because they did not believe the report they did not receive the report hallelujah they did not accept the report Isaiah went on to ask the other question. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? It is saying that if you believe, if you receive, if you accept the report, then to you, the power of the Lord will be revealed. The power comes by revelation. And that's why sometimes it's hard for us to detect it. We don't have no instrument to tap and to pick up the power. It's by revelation to them that believe to them that receive to them that accept come on church come on church I wonder where we are I wonder where we are hallelujah to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed it's by revelation we don't serve a common God Oh God Almighty, that will show off his skill everywhere, every time. Sometimes Jesus passed through some place. I ain't no better than a miracle. And then again, when he does miracle, he said, Don't tell nobody. Come on, somebody. It's by revelation. But we must believe. So the same who believe to them it will be revealed. Can we lift our hands and praise the Lord? Come on, somebody, could we lift our hands and magnify hallelujah? The mystical God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Who hath believed our report? And he said, our it means that himself and the other prophets prophesying long time long time when they get the word we're not new come on preaching after preaching teaching after teaching but how many believe how many receive how many accept hallelujah praise God and so in oh, how many lives is the power is the arm hallelujah just the arm just the arm just the, just, just the arm one arm of the Lord being revealed if we're not seeing the power check our belief if we're not experiencing the arm check our belief come on somebody test the gauge of your belief hallelujah test
test what you're believing. Come on, test, search out what am I accepting? Hallelujah, what am I receiving? Somebody, because if you receive evil report, then you'll get the revelation of evil. The Bible says, if you sow to the flesh, from the flesh you will reap corruption. But if you sow to the spirit, from the spirit you will receive what? Life. Come on, somebody. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. We have some work to do. Or we have some things to vomit out. We have some reports that we need to get rid of. It has caused us to become dead and, and lethargic. It has caused the power of God in us to become dormant. Hallelujah. We have to get rid of some of these negative, evil reports that we have been receiving. So Isaiah said, Hallelujah. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Thank you, Jesus. And so, there are so many reports, so many voices. But whose, whose, whose will we hear? The world system has its own report. Hallelujah. And it speaks to prosperity. Mm? It calls us to sow in. And by us sowing in, we're through going to school, trying to get the best jobs and to get the best quality or type of degree that will make us more marketable. Because the world is speaking to prosperity. That's the world's report. But what the world system failed to tell us is that no matter how hard we work, no matter how hard we sow, no matter the type of degrees we attain, only one percent, one percent will be considered the elites. One, it doesn't matter how hard. So I would subscribe to us. Get rid of that report. Don't use that report as a means of counsel. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that one of our enemy is the world. And so nothing that the world comes up with is not in our favor. So whatever report is coming from the systems of the world, take it with a grain of salt. Amen? Amen. Don't be too quick to digest it. We have the devil's report. Evil report. Hallelujah. Praise God. He always tried to twist He's a deceiver. He's deceptive. And so everything that is of God, that is holy, that is righteous, that is true, the enemy's job is to try to twist. Can't believe that the report. He's a liar. And the father of it. So if he shows you, hallelujah, the cats upon a thousand hills and say to you you know if you do this you can receive it all don't believe him he's twisting so he said to Eve you shall not surely die twist twist serpentile sneaky so we can't believe that report come on somebody he didn't come to you and tell us, say, Sister Pine don't like you. Don't believe. But oftentimes, he comes with these evil reports. And we believe them. 
and start acting out and start to show bad face and cut eye and turn back and not shaking hands because we have received that evil report come on church vomit it out get rid of it hallelujah it's an evil and deceptive report because the enemy wants to sever our relationship with God anything he can do to taint our relationship with God to pull us away from God he will do it because he cannot get back into that place where he once was and he doesn't want any of us to attain unto it so women today we have to be careful sometimes we open our ears and our spirits to too many evil reports and if every time somebody comes to me if it was something negative about somebody else I don't think I want to continue to be in the same company because now I would have enough evidence to realize that the enemy the devil is using such a person come on somebody and so we have to sever ourselves from becoming corrupted hallelujah from becoming tainted by these evil reports whatsoever thing we allow to settle in our spirit will dictate the course of our life that's why the, the wise man said guard your heart with all diligence protect it hallelujah because out of it comes the issue comes your course of life so whatever you receive in your spirit will now determine your attitude your disposition how you shape your personality and also fix up your character i have to get rid of it it's a serious theme whose report because there are so many reports and we realize that they are affecting us and if we are to be truthful and begin to examine our own lives individually we would realize somewhere along the line that some report that we were not to receive has messed us up we have become as it were just a number on the church book we only come because it's a ritual but our relationship with god we have none prior life we have none we have become as it were dead and dried up because of the reports that we have received and it caused us to wilt and die like a flower that's not been watered and so we only turn up on a Sunday or on a service day or on a service night but we only present in body whose report the Bible said in Isaiah in, in, in Hebrews sorry that there is a root of bitterness you know what he was talking about that root of bitterness came about why because the Hebrew brethren were going under onslaught in the time of Nero the Roman Empire and Christianity was not a legal religion and so those who chose to accept the Messiah as the Messiah and begin to follow Jesus they had to be hiding their families were dispersed their families were broken up and children had to be over there and husband over here and wife over there and so they were as it were criminals because the religion wasn't legal and these people were coming out of a religion that was widely accepted Judaism they had no issues they had no problem going into the synagogues 
and now Isaiah said to me that the Messiah will come and now they say the Messiah has come but since the Messiah come up with a problem so something not adding up since Jesus came into my life everything went like this it's like he turned me upside down and shake shake out that was what was happening to the Hebrew brethren and so Paul had to write to them and comfort them and tell them don't go back don't go back go entangle yourself you know where you are you are standing in the midst of a numerous company of angels Hebrew 12 you know where you are you have come to Mount Zion you know where you are you have come to the holy city you know where you are you're standing in Jerusalem ah you know who you are you are the sons of God come on somebody you are in the midst of the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ that speaks better things than that of Abel you are standing hallelujah in heavenly places don't go back but the brethren were bitter because of their suffering who were they bitter against God so that root of bitterness that Hebrews talks about is a bitterness against God many of us here today we are bitter against God why because we first started out believing the report but as we walk we look to the side and we look to the left and we look to the right and it seems like the report will look so bright the evil brethren is saying but if he is the messiah why do i suffer so much why all of a sudden i'm following christ and this is what is happening to me come on somebody still believe the report so many of us have been walking 20 years, 10 years, 5 years, 1 year. And we are bitter. And we can see it in our disposition. When we come, we sit and we drag down ourselves in the seat. We just drop. When we come, we don't bother come to the altar to pray. We steer on our back and we stand up and we, we do all this kind of stuff. When we are asked to stand and lift our hands, we barely want to stand and lift our hands can't have a sweet relationship you can't tell me your relationship with God is sweet when you come into the house of God you don't want to lift your hands something is wrong come on somebody something is wrong whose report the report remains true and it doesn't matter sister secretary what happens in my life or your life it does not negate the report it does not falsify the report of the lord it doesn't make the report of god of none effect it doesn't make god's report null and void his words stand forever it is not contingent upon my physical standing what i have or what i don't have if I'm sick or if I'm well hallelujah praise God if I have money or not if I have issues or not the report of God stands true and if I were you I would go back to believe in it get up out of our despondencies get up out of our dismay get up out of our bitterness and go back to believe in the report of the Lord go back to hoping in the Lord Bible said hope thou in God go back to seeing God hallelujah as you're rocking a weary land the wheel in the middle of the wheel your strong tower hallelujah your rock and hiding place your shield and butler the one who is spread the table before you in the presence of your enemy go back and believe the report and say to yourself hope thou 
come on somebody in the Lord wake up your soul wake up your consciousness and say soul I'm going back to believe in the report of the Lord because his yeah is yeah and his nay is nay his words are true ancient words ever true changing me hallelujah and changing you oh let the ancient word be true his words are true somebody the last report is a report of our flesh the wickedest report is the one of our flesh but the Bible said if my own heart condemns me God is greater than my heart the flesh wants to condemn us the flesh wants to tell us that we are no good the flesh wants to tell us that we can't make it the flesh wants to tell us that you know see all these years of commitment it brings you nothing the flesh wants to tell us that walking in holiness is out of style we need to do something different the flesh the one that we can't seem to get rid of that goes with us everywhere we go that sleeps with us every night in the same bed this flesh this clothing of failure that is called the flesh gives us a report that tells us we will never make it but I have news from my flesh today hallelujah praise God that the Lord said he will never leave me nor forsake me hallelujah praise God that he has gone to prepare a place and if it wasn't so he would have said it there is coming a day when I shall drop off this corruption when I shall put off this martyr hallelujah Thessalonians says that when the trump of God shall sound hallelujah the dead in Christ shall rise first and they that remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air hallelujah praise God fresh your time of expiration is coming I shall take off this corruptible and put on in corruption I shall take off this mortal and put on immortality forevermore to be with my savior I will have no endurance I will have no flesh to tell me say me tired and me can't worship I will have no flesh to say you know sister your head they hurt you you know sister you're weak you know sister you're sick come on somebody tell your flesh to shut up Luke gave us the account of a woman. The Bible says she was bent up, doubled up in posture, deformed, rolled up. Her head could not raise up. She could in no wise lift up herself. The devil bound her up. But the Bible said every Saturday she found herself doubled up but in the synagogue and one Saturday Jesus saw her the reports were many woman you're not supposed to be out of so you're deformed you know she say praise God almighty you're crippled up can I your yard you're a misfit you shouldn't be in society but praise God she believed the report of the Lord 
Lord. And in spite of the many reports that was coming to her, she took her time. Every Saturday, she found herself. She pushed past this report. She pushed past that report. She pushed past the one that is pulling her back. And she said, let go off of me. I'm going into the house of the Lord. Whose report? Whose report? Whose report? Whose report? When time came, Jesus went to the same synagogue purposefully. The Bible said he saw her. The elders didn't see her. The rabbis did not see her for 18 years. Oh, God Almighty. 18 years in a bent up position. No hope for no future. No marriage. No children. No job. No financial security. But she pushed. She pushed. In the house. Then Jesus had to see her. Come on somebody. He called her. He said, woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmities. Then he laid his hand on her. She began to straighten up herself. Whose report? Whose report? It's time for us to clear out. Clear out the closet. Clear out the library. Clear out the spirit. Clear out the mind. Clear out the heart of every evil, every worldly, every fleshly, every carnal report that we have received. It's time to make space for the report of God to take root and begin to grow, spread out in us. It's time for us to start experiencing the revelation of the power of God. It comes through accepting. Come on, somebody. It comes through accepting the report of the Lord. Believe what God says about you. He said he will beautify the meek with salvation. Hallelujah, praise God. He says we are more than conquerors. He says we have received power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon us. He says we are above and not beneath. He says we are the head and not the tail. He said he will never leave us nor forsake us. There is how I was young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Believe the report of the Lord. Come on, somebody. Press. I know the negative report has taken root in us and we believe it so much. We have had it in us for so long. And it is deep down within the recesses of our spirit. But we can root it out today. Like the woman, hallelujah, with the spirit of infirmity. We need to press. Push past every evil report. Push past every report of our flesh. Push past every report of the world. They look how long you're trying and say, you know, have, have it yet. I've got it. I said, I've got it. 
thank God I've got it too. It's the Holy Ghost and come on, burning, burning in my soul. Thank God I've got it too. Come on, thank God I've got it too. It's the Holy Ghost and come on and it's burning burning in my soul thank god i've got it too. come on thank god i've got it too yeah, it's the holy ghost of me and it's burning burning in my soul thank god i've got it too. Yeah, thank god i've got it report I may be sick in my body but I believe his report can't find no fear to go to work tomorrow but I believe his report <laughs> no gas in the gas drum but I believe his report the car may be an E but I believe his report sometimes I become discouraged but I believe his report Sometimes I'm distraught emotionally, but I believe his report. Sometimes I can't tell you how, but I believe his report. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Let the report of the Lord say so in our lives. Let the report of the Lord say so in your life. Let the report of the Lord say so in your home. Let his report say so in your body. Let his report say so in your finances. Let his report say so in your mind. Let his report say so in your spirit. Let his report say so in your emotion. You have to believe. You have to believe. And when you believe, the revelation of his power, come on, will be made manifest. The arm of the Lord will be revealed in your life. But you must believe his report. Those who are the Holy Ghost, please come. Come on, somebody will believe in the report of the Lord today. Those who are the Holy Ghost, yes. Come on, come on. I'm going to ask the altar workers just to come quickly. Come on. We believe God's report. He said it's unto you. Unto your children, children. Unto those who are far off. It's a promise. Come on, while you come for the Holy Ghost, start believing.